Hi. Assalamualaikum. We meet again in our online class. This is Razali. Okay. Uh, we will. We still in chapter two. We will continue our discussion in uh, chap subtopic um, two point five, which is multiplexing and demultiplexing. Sometimes you 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 will notice that this uh, topic is known as marks demarks okay meaning multiplexing and demultiplexing okay multiplexing physical links and nodes are shared among users synchronous tdm time division multiplexing and we have also frequency division multiplexing ftm okay so we have uh, L1, L2, L3, and then add switch one. Uh, multiple flows on a single link, single channel. And add switch two. The process of demarks demark is, is, uh, is done, and the signal is then demarks is, uh, is back to three channel three different channel r1 r2 and r3 why multiplexing in effect it increases the number of communication channels so that more information can be transmitted often in communication it is necessary or desirable to transmit more than one voice or data signal simultaneously so this is the keyword for multiplexing in order to transmit more than one signal data simultaneously at at the same time an application may require multiple signals or cost saving can be gained can be obtained using single communication channel or single normally fiber fiber single fiber uh, channel to send multiple information signal so where does this multiplexing uh, applications uh, normally happen? So in tele first is in telephone system, second is in telemetry, third is in satellites, fourth is in modern FM stereo broadcasting, and last but not least, modern TV broadcasting. So without multiplexing, this would be. Uh, expensive very expensive or impossible okay so without multiplexing it is impossible to or very expensive in order to uh, to send uh, each of these signal one by one without multiplexing common types of multiplexing first is FDM frequency division multiplexing second is TDM time division multiplexing and third is this is third is CDMA code division multiple access so these three are the most common types of multiplexing in FDM it used for FDM is used for analog information individual signal to be transmitted are assigned a different frequency within a common bandwidth second is tdm time division multiplexing time division multiplexing is used for digital information okay uh, and then multiple signals are transmitted in different time slots uh, or on a single channel used for digital information eh? tdm uh, tdm is also found in many analog applications because the process of a to d and d to a digital to analog and analog to digital a, d, a to d is analog to digital d to a is digital to analog conversion are so common so if you can have a to d and d to a for analog signal you can use tdm also for CDM, CDMA, 
CDMA is widely used in cell phone system, allow many cell phone subscribers to use a common bandwidth at the same time. So uh, CDMA use spectrum user spread of spectrum. Okay, so this is the example of uh, common types of multiplexing. So first we have FDM, frequency division. And second is TDM, time division. So if you have time here, so for example here we have four, four users, four signals different signals so for frequency division at the same time you have you have all all the signal but sending at different frequency okay for time division multiplexing you have uh, each signal have their own at, at each time there are only one signal so each signal is sent at their own time okay that is a uh, brief description lah. of course uh, in order to understand this uh, better you need to go uh, deeper into the uh, principles of this uh, fdm and tdm we will discuss this I think uh, you need to go on your own if you want to understand more on those or you want to uh, re-polish your knowledge or your um, understanding on those topics because this I think already been uh, learned in the previous uh, subject okay For FDM frequency division multiplexing Okay, in this FDM, you have uh, you have four channel for four signal. You have four channel, so each channel have different frequency. For example, channel one cover from two to four kilohertz. Channel two from four to six kilohertz. Channel three from six to eight kilohertz, and channel four from eight to ten kilohertz. Okay, so these four users has their own um, signal and then at the multiplexer, this signal is converted into this channel. Okay, so at the multiplexer, here the multiplexer, you will get the signal back into four different uh, users okay example one cable tv coaxial cable has a bandwidth of approximately 500 megahertz individual television channel require about 6 megahertz of bandwidth for transmission how many channels it will carry ha, okay so this is the answer lah. So you just divide this one eh? so it can carry approximately 83 channels in theory example two five channel each with a hundred kilohertz bandwidth are to be multiplexed together what is the minimum bandwidth of the link if there is a need for a guard band of 10 kilohertz between the channel to prevent interference okay so you have here 100 kilohertz bandwidth, 5 channel. So for 5 channel, we need at least 4 guard bands. Okay. Guard band here, 10 kilohertz. So altogether, 540 kilohertz. So this question and answer is shown uh, in this figure shown graphically graphically in this uh, figure so you have five channel one two three let's say this is channel one channel two 
channel 3, channel 4, channel 5. All these channels require 100 kHz. And for these 5 channels, you need a uh, 4. This is gut band, you call it. Uh, the spacing between uh, one between uh, the channels, the spacing between the channels. So this is gut band of uh, 10 kilohertz. So all together, you, you need at least 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 500 kilohertz and then 4 gut band at 10 kilohertz each. So all together, you, you, will, you will need 540 kilohertz. Okay, so for time division multiplexing, in time division multiplexing TDM, each signal occupies the entire bandwidth of the channel. Each signal is transmitted for only a brief period of time. TDM can be used with both digital and analog signal. So this is the um, TDM. Signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, signal 4, signal 1, signal 2, signal 3, signal 4 and so on okay at one frame they at one frame you have four four different signal okay, and then you have another frame four different signal okay so for time division multiplexing time slots are grouped into frames a frame consists of of a one complete cycle of time slot in this case, 4, 4, 4, 4, okay? Including one or more slots dedicated to each sending device. So, dalam kes ni, tak adalah. So, in this, uh, in this example, you can see, you have 4 devices sending the signal from uh, transmitter to receiver. So here in the multiplexer, the signal is multiplexed into four, um, into frame of four time slot. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and then another frame, one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. Okay, including one or including one or more slots dedicated to each sending device. Sometimes we have this, uh, like um like the gut band in previous example we have discussed before okay we also have synchronous and asynchronous tdm for synchronous tdm the multiplexer allocates exactly the same time slot to each device at all times whether or not a device has anything to transmit capacity is ways to simplify hardware implementation for asynchronous tdm also known as statistical TDM, each time in a frame is not dedicated to the fixed device. The number of slots in a frame is not necessarily equal to the number of input device. More than one slot in a frame can be allocated for an input device. So this is another more complicated uh, TDM. Lah. Okay. So in this case, uh, example of synchronous, macam tadi lah. Macam yang first tadi A, 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 A B, B, C, D, D, D Ni dia punya For synchronous TDM We have each of this Ada Empat Tapi ni tak ada Dia ambil yang ni kan A Ambil yang ni dulu A Ni tak ada Ni tak ada Ni tak ada So A je Frame satu Frame four Oh yang ni dulu eh Yang ni dulu so, yang ni masuk dulu. A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. Frame 1. Okay. Uh, next, frame 2. The second um, second uh, sequence. A, B, C tak ada dah. C tak ada. D ada. So, A, B, C tak ada. D ada. So, yang ni. Ini dia become. Um. Capacity is wasted. Ni sepatutnya boleh isi benda tapi tak tak guna kan? sebab tak ada. And so on and so forth. You tengok kat sini kan. So, 
at the demultiplexing process so kita akan dapat similar signal at the multiplexer whereas uh, for a synchronous tdm so you tengok frame frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 frame 4 so frame 1 1 a 2 b 3 c uh, frame frame 1 frame dia dia ada apa beza dia frame ni ada 3 je kan 3 3 ni 4 so beza dia uh, yang ni dia ada numbering 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 tak ada 4 so different number of um unit number of uh, element dalam frame yang ni ada 4 yang ni ada 3 so at the plus at the demultiplexing still uh, we can we can uh, extract we can get the signal because we already tag the signal with the numbering okay so you have 1 a here 2 b here 3 c here and then 4 here 4 d here and then again 1 2 3 tak ada okay 3 tak ada so tak ada dan tak ada tak ada okay so that is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous tdm In synchronous TDM, if a frame can consist of multiple units, a unit can consist of one bit or multiple bits. In synchronous TDM, it is possible to have empty units. Okay, ni ni dipanggil units. Eh? So, this is for synchronous TDM, it is possible to have empty units. So, this is empty, this is empty, this is empty, this is empty, empty. Okay. Multiplexing, demultiplexing. So, uh, so here, sorry, yeah. Here, uh, each frame is three time slots. Each time slot duration is t second. So you have unit A one, C one, A two, B two, A three, B three, C three. So this is the empty units. For for demultiplexing, you will produce the same signal as the signal before multiplexing process. For asynchronous TDM, synchronous TDM does not guarantee that the full capacity of a link is used because the time slots are pre-assigned and fixed. What whenever a connected device is not transmitting, the corresponding slot is empty. Asynchronous Asynchronous time division multiplexing or statistical time division, also known as statistical time division, is designed to avoid this type of waste. So, asynchronous TDM is designed to, to remove the empty slot. Like synchronous TDM, asynchronous TDM allows a number of lower speed input lines to be multiplexed to a single higher speed line. However, in asynchronous TDM, the total speed of our input lines can be greater than the capacity of, of the link. In asynchronous TDM, in an asynchronous system, if we have an N input lines, the frame contains no more than M slots with M less than N. The number of M, the number of time slot in A is an asynchronous TDM frame M is based on statistical analysis of the number of input lines that are likely to be transmitting at any given time. In this case, any slot is available to any of the attached input lines that has data to send. Example of asynchronous TDM frames, case 1, only 3 lines sending data. So you have here 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 but only three have the data. K1 
case one only three lines sending data so you have one a here three c here five e here so all these are tagged with the number of the lines case two only four lines sending data one one two one two sorry this one two three four so on only four lines sending data you have a one a three c d four five e one a three c four d five e okay so the signal is sent with the number of the lines only only four lines sending data case three all five lines sending data so you have one a two b three c four d five e one a so all this having the data all lines having the data so but there are only three units still the frame has three units okay asynchronous tdm addressing an overhead in asynchronous tdm each time slot must carry an address number lah telling the demultiplexer how direct the data this address for local use only is attached by the multiplexer and discarded by the multiplexer once it has been read okay so this address is for local use meaning for use between multiplexer and demultiplexer after the process of demultiplexing finish the address data is will be removed will be discarded asynchronous tdm is efficient only when the size of the time slot keep relatively large okay so that's all about asynchronous tdm uh, i think that's all for now uh, until we meet again in another topics okay thank you for your attention and that's all see you again bye bye